G'day and welcome back to my channel and thank you to the hundreds of people that subscribed after my last chatty video about that dreadful Fiat. Yeah, that one from It'll Scary. Ugh. I think I hit a common chord there of all the people who have suffered in Larry. Now, this time I want to talk about Schmur, right? Have you ever heard about Schmur? Look, I've, I've only ever had a few of their kits and only one that I built. Well, when I say one, it took three kits to build one model. And um, look, this time, although the kit was absolute rubbish and I had to do so much to it and I did throw it against the wall at one stage, I did get a result and it actually won in competition. So this is a time where, okay, it didn't beat me. Yes, it was absolutely dreadful kit. The fuselage halves were different lengths. Things didn't fit. Things like the, the pontoons and the... Um, the struts that go into that whole section. Well, there weren't so much, um, you know, fixing points for the parts, for the struts. More like, ah, it's roughly in this area. We'll put a little depression there. You figure it out. I'm sure you'll come up with something. Yeah. A vague, blobby... Uh, and yet, some other parts, like the detail on the fuselage and the detail on the wings, very good. Very nicely moulded. It is... A kit that is just, it's its a conundrum. It really is. It, it has some good things and then other things are absolutely dreadful, such as the props, which are literally blobs of plastic. And I carved those. I sat there, took me a whole evening, and I carved those into an actual representation of contra-rotating propellers. Yes, that's it. All right, well, look, I won't tell you too much more because what you can see now is the full build and I go through everything that happened, including that terrible moment where I was going to give up and this thing hit the wall with an almighty thump. All right, here it is. Roll the music. <laughs> So the box art is very promising. I mean, it's very inviting. It looks so exciting. And I did some research and it sounded like a great subject. And then you have a look at the kit parts. And they are, there's not many of them, but what there are, are dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Now look at this prop. It's just great big flash and blobs and totally out of shape. It took me a whole evening carving, but I did manage to finally get a result. And I got something that actually looked like a pair of contra retraining props. So that was good. Now... Moved on to the fuselage, and I said the halves didn't quite fit together. They're actually slightly different lengths. And, but I persevered, and I managed to get the basic body parts together. And, you know, it kind of looked like an aircraft. It sort of got there. The floats, I haven't got photos of it, but it took me ages to get those floats into shape. I remember Becca looking at the floats in the kit and going, there's no way I'm cleaning those up. They're a mess. But you can get them to shape. It just requires lots of fiddling. So I moved on to doing the struts. Yep. This is where it got interesting. There's no real proper locating points. Everything is guesswork. You've got to figure it out for yourself. And I jigged it and lined it and did the best I could. But it looked like a float plane. I thought, well, okay, we're just about on track here. It kind of looks like what it's supposed to look like. Slapped a coat of red paint on it and realized she was a tail sitter. That I'm going to have to put some weights in the floats. But of course, I'd already assembled it all. So I had to drill some holes in the floats. And then I put in some little lead sinkers and some zap glue interior well there wasn't any there's no interior at all there's nothing they don't give you a single thing so I did some research online and luckily there are tons and tons of photos of this there is at least one preserved example of this aircraft in a museum so you can get a good look at what the interior should look like it's fairly sparse but I had a kit left over that had a spare interior that was a p40 and I had a whole interior left over from that thought hmm I wonder it was 148 anyhow I managed to make it fit it took a lot of carving, uh, but I managed to get the seat in. wasn't a problem. But the seat shape wasn't quite right for the hole that was in because that whole backrest area needed to be cut out to that sort of shape. That's okay. Marked all that up. I did a whole lot of fiddling and fiddling. And, you know, I got those parts fit absolutely spot on. Only four parts, but it lifted the whole thing because it gave an interior. Oh, I also made up the um, Perspex windshield. That wasn't that hard. And there you go. That's how it finished up. So I was pretty happy with that. It really looked a lot better than what they provided for in the kit. Now, struts. While I was doing this, I managed to break the struts at the bottom there. So they had to be reset and glued back in. It was only at this point I started to notice something about my floats. And, oh dear, 
they had completely morphed out of shape and turned into these big wobbly bananas. And I made some rude words that Bassa Cat had to run away and hide in the bathroom. Oh, dear. So it hit the wall and I snapped everything off. And I thought, what am I going to do? But luckily I'd bought two of these kits. One I'd given to the Becker. He decided it was all too hard, gave me his kit. And so I started to rebuild it and reuse the parts that were in his kit to fix my kit, which had sailed against the wall. So endless nights again, fixing up all those bloody floats getting that all together. This time I made sure the sinkers went in with some Sally's PVA white wood glue. Then I jigged the whole thing up, made sure she was true. She was sitting nicely on her feet. Terrific. Glued and glued and set and set. And I thought, okay, I've got this thing true now. I've got it to shape. Dihedrals are all right. Whacked a coat of primer on. That looked pretty good. So the great primer uniformed everything. But if you're going to paint rent, you need white underneath. It really works so much better. So it's worth putting that extra layer of paint on because otherwise you've got to put like three or four coats of red just to get it to, you know, look any good. So here I'm just tidying everything up, fixing everything up, sorting it all out. Then it was a matter of masking out areas that I'm going to need to paint other colours because I wanted to get the red on. So I just put a flat matte coat of red to start with so I could basically get this thing sort of blocked out and get it ready because the next thing I need to do was attend to those radiators. Now it's got a ton of radiators all over it and these radiators are made out of copper. So it is a bit tricky to paint copper. It took me a long time and a lot of experiments until I figured out a way to make these radiators look realistic. And the way to do it was using Tamiya of all things Tamiya copper paint and hand brushing it on and I had to stroke it in the direction of the ribs You can see the little ribs there in the actual copper radiators But if you did that the results were terrific and I'd mastered all up So I made sure I kept it nice and neat So I was very happy with my final result doing the radiators In fact a lot of people had struck out trying to do those radiators They are quite tricky to get realistic Then I did a reverse mask all my radiators are masked up because now she's got to go fully red again So as a matter of masking off anything that was either the copper colour or my props and things like that because I just wanted to get that beautiful Italian red. And there it is. That is a Tamiya rattle cam, would you believe it? But it is a gorgeous, gorgeous deep colour. So pretty happy with that. Detail painting now. I had to get those props looking silver. So um, that wasn't too hard. My interior had been all painted up and I'd gone round and touched up any little edges and I was really getting enthusiastic about it. The model was starting to look quite realistic and I was starting to fall in love with this kit despite the fact piece of junk. Now uh, I had to mark out some black areas all those exhaust ports along the fuselage there because it's got two like V12 engines back to back in this thing it's quite incredible. Then I added a wash to it to bring out all the detail and some rigging but it's easy line it's hard to see there you'll see it in later photos. Now she's looking great but I don't know. I was encouraged to put it into competition. I knew all the foibles and things were wrong with it. But surprise, surprise, I won first place. And then at the end of the year, I got a bronze medallion for all my model making. And I was commended for that um, for that build. So there she is. Quite surprising. Uh, you know, I look at it fondly now. But when I was building, I was thinking, what a dog. And I didn't know if I'd ever make it all the way through. But I'm so glad I persevered and I kept you know, pushing myself and trying to get the best out of this kit. And building that scratch interior, that got me started on doing a lot of scratch work. And after that, I wasn't frightened of modifying anything, fixing up any old dog, because I knew, look like that, you could build a whole interior for something if you put your mind to it. So this really encouraged me to improve my models and to make them my own, do something different with them. And to, to build something that wasn't just a, you know, a throw together, you know, bake and shake and bake and bake sort of kit, get a kit that you can really get your teeth into, and you'll love it. So there she is, yes. <laughs> Lovely little kit once it's finished, yes. An absolute dog to build, yeah. An absolutely dreadful kit to build. I mean, you know, um, a lot of people would have given up. I think the only reason that I managed to survive is, yeah, if they're on special, they're like literally under a pound. I was buying something else online out of the UK, and this came up because I was always looking for float planes. I like float planes. And this came up for less than a pound. And I think maybe they gave two for the price of one. I know, it was really cheap. I'm going to put this down so I don't wreck it. Anyhow, the, um, it was so cheap. And I thought, oh, how bad could that be? I'm sure it's okay. I'm sure I can make it work. You know, and there's nothing else you can get. Well, there's very little representation of that Mackie. 
um, anywhere else in modelling, I mean, that, that I know of, you know. So, um, yeah, I got two of them, and one was for the backer. But, um, yeah, the backer sort of saw what was happening with mine and how dreadful it was, and then when I wrecked, <laughs> I wrecked the pontoons, you know, which was my own mistake, you know, super glue in a confined space. Who knew it would make the thing blow up? Yeah, mm, never again. No, back to PVA white wood glue. Yes, that's it. That's my friend. Uh, so, yes, thank goodness the Becker had said, look, you can have this kit back. I don't want it. Because, you know, I basically gave him one for free as a present. He said, you bastard. <laughs> he knew some more about Smur than I did. Uh, he builds a lot more aircrafts, a lot more float planes. But anyhow, yeah, in the end, this was a case of, unlike the Fiat, where it just, you know, it got me. With this one, I could make changes and I could have a success and I scratched that whole interior, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And I rebuilt suspension struts and made them my own, carved props and, you know, did a whole lot of things. The challenge of painting the radiators was, was great. I mean, I used three or four different methods until I got the one that worked with actually using Tamiya paint, which I normally don't like to hand brush. It's just dreadful stuff here because it just dries on your brush. But I worked out a technique and I got a result. And as I say, in the end... I wasn't even going to put it in comp. And I'm going to encourage my friends at model clubs to bring it along to competition. All right, one first place. And then that year at the big big model show, QMHE, again, they said, bring that along and put it on the table. And a lot of people asked me about it. And a lot of people talked about it. I think some of them had actually tried to build that kit and theirs had ended against the wall and never come back. So when they saw mine, they went, this can't be the Smurr kit. But of course, it was. And this is a case of where perseverance and having a bit of focus and not letting the kit get you down. Plus it's red. I mean, if you see my other videos, the little red aeroplane always wins. Yes. All right, that's it for Smur. Next time, I've got another kit manufacturer and this will be in a couple of weeks' time. I'm only going to do one of these every couple of weeks. It's a well-known kit manufacturer that I will never build again. No. Horrified. Disgusted. Disappointed. Let down. Completely screwed by them. Who could it be? You'll have to wait till then to find out. But that's it for the Smur Mackie, or as I call it, the macaroni plane. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. And if you like this video, please click like. It really helps me out because the, the bots and the algorithm and all that sort of stuff, you know, kick me along if you like. OK, it also works if you dislike, but don't dislike. Please don't dislike. I get upset and I cry myself to sleep at night. <laughs> and comment if you've got something to say, just be respectful. And if you really like the stuff I'm doing, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so that you basically get noticed whenever I'm putting another stupid video up. And if you really want to help me out, there's always Patreon and YouTube membership, which lets you see things like this weekend's live show. Yeah, once a month I do a big live show. One hour chatting away to all the people. You can interact with me. You can ask me questions. It's a whole lot of fun but it's only available live to Patreons and YouTube members. So consider that. All right, it's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Denny.